Who are you going to get the fishing bag? All right, let me see if I can get this bag. set up at least somewhat decent. Maybe if we put it right here, maybe that's maybe that's where we'll go. All right. There we go. All right, what's up, everybody? Well, I ain't got a fishing video this week. I was going to do a tutorial. I just didn't like the way it came out, so I'm not going to put it out. Right here, we got my grandpa right here. We got my Mimi right there. We got my uh, brother's son, Brayden. He's right here. And that's my mom. So I figured we have some funny, but also learning experiences, like stories and stuff like that, and old family fishing stories. And y'all can learn a little bit from, y'all can learn a little bit about me, cause he's probably gonna make fun of me at some point in time. And my mom is just gonna sit the back there and probably giggle the whole time. And then uh, the Wicked Witch of West Wego, over here, <laughs> it probably, it probably say all kind of stuff. Maybe you might want to scoot back a little bit. I can't even no, see your no, face. No, 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 no. You don't want. To, my Mimi does not want to be seen in the video, I guess. But anyway, you know, Popo, when did you first start taking me fishing? You were like five or six years old. About five or six years old. Well, yeah. I mean, I got that trophy from 1993 with the flounder, yeah. so I had to have been about five. Yeah. So I, I mean. So, but, uh, yeah, we just talking about, me and him was talking about uh, earlier, the good old days of fishing, at least on the west side of Louisiana, and like Empire and, uh, you know, Port Sulphur and Myrtle Grove. You know, when, when I remember when I was a kid, when I used to go to Myrtle Grove, there was no um, uh, condos or the houses on the bank. You used to be able to fish along the bank, and that was always a good wintertime spot for us. Yeah. You know, and um, it just seems like now you can't go into the little side canals and, the, you know, it just depends. Well, all the canals have gotten more shallow. Yeah, they, they, they did they, get they, more shallow. They dug, they dug out the side canals and they put more water more, more water there. Right. It used to be about 20 feet deep, now it's about 6 feet deep. Yeah, all the old stuff that we used to fish, like Manila Village and was that Bossa Bossa that we used to fish during the summertime, that stuff's all... All gone. All, all gone. gone no more. All that coastal erosion. Ain't you know, there no more. Ain't there no more. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. We're going to go into the first uh, fishing story. Mimi, why don't you tell us a funny fishing story that involved you? <laughs> if y'all can see my Mimi over there. Or oh, you don't want to say a funny story. All right. So many of them to tell. I had so many of them to tell. I had the first time I ever caught a fish was at St. Joe's Dam. With Sammy Barrage and Noel Barrage, was fishing, and I caught a redfish. You caught a redfish? Yeah, and Noella was crabbing, but she was sticking her toes in the water, and the crabs are coming to the water, just biting on the toes, and was catching crabs like that. I caught a big old redfish. That thing was about that long. I'm screaming and howling. I got something on my line, and I'm reeling in, and Papa saying, well, reeling in, reeling in. I said, I'm trying, I'm trying, and that thing was hard for me to reel in. And then when I finally got it, that was a big fish for me. Yeah. I was happy. There you I go. know I don't well, like She's talking fish. about the crabs biting on the toes and all, but when we used to go to Grand Isle at this time, early, we were talking about a long time ago. We used to go there, they had shrimp and all that would be sticking in. We'd be all in the water and crabs all over the place. There's all kinds of seafood in the water. And yeah, I know. I remember that when we were younger, my grandma used to, this is what she loved to do. She'd grab a piece of chicken neck or a chicken something, and she'd put it on a pole. She would get about neck level, and she'd sit there, and she'd just catch a crab after crab after crab. While me and him uh, and whoever was there, Dylan or Uncle Mark or Little Mark, we would all be over there. We'd put a pole here <laughs> and a pole uh, like, you know, 40 Line yards fishing. away. And then we would have like little drop lines of chicken that hung hung uh, closer to the bottom. And then we would just walk that and just scoop up crabs. And I mean, how many times did we go out there and just catch like a bushel of crabs? Oh, uh, how many times did you raise up the line and have four or five, six crabs on one, one chicken? Now? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I'll be a famous Having fisherman all that stuff. one day. I take after the blanders to go fishing. <laughs> Say my name is Braden. Yeah. So... <laughs> So I heard that my mama, she used to hide in the deck. And why don't you just tell us a little story. The only thing that you liked about fishing is what? 
me and my brother, Mark, would take naps underneath the deck while they would trawl. And the only other time I'd come out from under there would be to catch the little crabs when they dropped the trawl net, catch the little crabs or the little fish that you would blow up. Right. So they could blow up and I could play with them. And then my other brother, Scott, he would be all in the box grabbing everything. He didn't care. He was a little he fisher. He didn't. He's not the one that would go to sleep, but me and Mark would go to sleep on the. He evening. was a little fisher. And the only fishing I've ever done is Papa never would take me because I always whined because I couldn't bait the hook. And if I did catch a fish, he'd have to stop and take it off the line. So I was too much trouble. Yeah. To go fish. First of all, wherever we went, <coughs> we took the kids with us. Yeah. Fishing. Mm-hmm. Elaine and Mark never liked to go fishing. Scott loved to go fishing. Yeah. So, yeah, we would do all that. We would go out there, and I remember, man, being a kid and just fishing by them poles on the moisture reefs two at a time and eat a popping cork. Man, we would, we would tear into them real good. Those were the good old days, at least the west side. It's just that you don't have the land there anymore, and uh, that, you know, you're losing your land. They, they got to do something with the diversions and stuff, but, you know, it's going to... It's gonna make it a constant changing game learning how to refish that fishery. Let me you know? tell you about a fishing experience we had in Lake Pontchartrain. It was on the trawl. <clears throat> we set the trawl out. They say we're catching big shrimp in Lake Pontchartrain. So we went fit. We went trawl, and I helped Angela put the trawl out. I took. I threw the uh, tickle the first line up. Then I threw the trawl. <laughs> I mean, the boards. The boards out. First you throw the line up, then you throw the, uh, the net up, then you throw the uh, the boards up. That's how it goes, huh? Yeah. So we go out there and we pull up the trawl and all we caught was a big old airplane tire. <laughs> you talk about hard. It was just him and me trying to pull that big old airplane tire out of the water. And all we picked up was those a stinking uh, big old airplane tire with rotten shrimp in it because somebody had caught it before and they should have kept it in a boat instead of throwing it back out. Uh, okay. All we had was a half a bucket of shrimp out yeah, all that time. We could barely roll it out. Damn. And another time, we was in Lake Ponce train, something happened with the boat. He was trying to get the... Uh, he had to go in the water. The motor, what? something... He had to go in the water. Up the gas and the gas got him sick. And then there we are. I said we're getting ready to crash into the, to the bridge over there. I'm getting I'm getting scared because <laughs> I'm getting we're getting close to the bridge. Somebody passed and they towed us in. So nice. Well, I wasn't seasick until I did the uh, gas and I did the the, the, the bowl of gasoline and check it to that trash in it. Smelled that gasoline and I was sick as dog. I, I would <laughs> not move. That happened to me in uh, in Cabo. I went into the cabin to check on Lauren because a wave hit and threw us all around. So I went to go check in, check in on her. And I smelled that uh, inboard diesel fume and it just sent me into a puking attack. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that gasoline made, made couple sick. Yeah. But uh, man, we used to go out there and we'd fish around Basa Basa. I remember going out there like before you got rid of your boat and before you got a little bit older and stuff. We'd go out there, we'd fish that one reef where it would drop from like a foot so, like a foot or so, and then drag it, remember where the monster of whatever yeah, reef it, that it, was? It always catch a fish. That was at uh, the Chinese platform. That's where the, the, the Manila people or Manila Chinese, Village, they whatever they do, they would dry shrimp. They were big, 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 big uh, boards like, uh, oh hell, just wharfs. And they'd put the shrimp on there and they'd let it dry. And uh, then storm took care of them. So all that, all that was gone. But that was the where well, we catch that monster, and then we never did land that fish. No, we didn't. You got you got that big old drum that one time. Yeah, but I don't know if that was the monster or not. We, we used to get on that and tear up the lines. Yeah, I remember we would sit there and just throw it on top of the reef and just reel it real, real slow right off, and then you feel that that little thump. Mm -hmm. and we would do that, and we would use what sparkle beetles and pretty much all H and H back in the day, because Matrix wasn't around or anything like that. It was just all 
H and H, right? No, we use we use boom shed. Boom shed? Yeah. I don't know what that is. That's before my time, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was the one we baked the first came out. You probably have some baits yeah. like that yes. up in the attic. Well, it was a hard, <laughs> a hard plastic with a little tail on it, like hmm. shad rig. Oh, okay. Is that the same thing you caught that big old triple tail on yeah. in Grand Isle? <laughs> so, yeah, t tell that story real quick. He caught a 27 pound triple tail. I'll tell you how long ago this is. I had the picture in my phone. It's in black and white, mm -hmm. and he didn't know he was scared to eat it. But I guarantee you, after I gave him that triple tail that one time, he was like, I can't believe I gave away that fish. So, <laughs> I don't know if we even just buried it for fertilizer. I, don't know. <laughs> I think we did. <laughs> Y'all buried that big old triple tail for fertilizer? <laughs> I probably did. Y'all crazy. Y'all, uh-uh. So I gave them triple tail that I caught a while back. And uh, they were like, man, it's so good. How good was that triple yeah, tail? It was good. Yeah. Really good. So how'd you catch the, How'd you end up catching that triple tail? Because I've seen a big one like that, like a 25 pounder a couple years ago. We in were Grand fishing Island. off the bridge in Grand Isle. The old bridge? The old bridge. Yeah. And uh, we used to go out there quite often to fish off. And we had a net so big that we used to put down in the water to, to bring our catch up. Because if you tried reeling them up, if you had two speckle trout on at one time, one would probably flop off. A boat of them was a time. You got to the top. So we got to be used to using a big old crab net. And we just maneuver them into that net and pick them up. Well, all day long, this big triple tail was hanging right underneath me there, right by the, the pylons and all of the bridge. And it wasn't doing anything except just staying down there. And I try and catch it every night and try and catch it. Mr. Pat, he was trying to catch it. Too. And nobody was having any success. All of a sudden, later on in the day, I dropped it down there, and it came out to the water pond, grabbed up the bait, and took off. That's how I caught it. <laughs> and you probably, what, that's before braid line was all out, so you was just using regular mono, huh? Well, well I use mono all my life. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I like the feel of fish. I don't want to just drag them. I don't, even know, I don't even know how you feel them. It's just got so much stretch in it. You know, I like braid yeah, when it's braid, like, braid, braid, braid is just like taking a broomstick and putting a piece of wire on it and dragging the fish in. You don't get to feel nothing. I mean, I feel like you feel everything. I don't know. I don't like mono because it's, it's so stretchy. It, it just jerk on. Boom. Boom. I'm from the old school. We use monofilament. Yeah, y'all can use them <laughs> monofilament. When you get to that, all the new stuff. We use a lot of light monofilament. Plus, we put a heavy uh, lever on it. Yeah. Monofilament. Well, see, see, this is the other thing, that, uh, too. It's like... Uh, what size, so back in the day, the fish that, y'all hear me say it all the time throughout the videos, the fish got me, the fish that got me addicted to fishing was a Jack Revelle. I want to say it was 28 pounds. I had to have been, what, about eight, eight years yeah, old when I caught that thing? Yeah, I just bought you a brand new reel. Yeah, he bought me a brand new reel, and the story goes is I threw the pole out there, had a popping cork with some kind of fake bait on the, the bottom. I popped it, cork goes down, I set the hook, it's a big fish, it comes off. You know little kids, they get all depressed and they're like, man, you can never get one like that again. I mean, that's how I was. And uh, I threw it back out there. He said, throw it back out there. You might get them again. So I threw it out there. Court goes down. I set the hook. He says, here, give me the pole. I give him the pole. He goes, yoink, yoink. He said, you hung up. I'll get you in a second. I said, uh-uh, Papa, I got a fish. And I freaking reared back and just set the hook hard and just started reeling. And then it took him, it took us, what, an hour and a half? I'm telling you, it took us about an hour and a half. Good while for this. He spooled me three yeah. times to like two wraps, and, and I started the game back on him. Know, that old reel, that was just chugging on, crunch, 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 crunch. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was all breaking apart. Well, what pound test I had on that? Because I keep saying it was eight. I don't know. It's probably about well, eight, huh? Well, we always fish with eight, ten pounds at the most. Yeah, I mean, I fish with ten pound braid now just for casting distance. That's what I pretty much use. Yeah, like I said, we would use an eight pound and then maybe put a fifteen pound uh, leader. Cut, yeah, leader on it. Mm. Carbon, probably carbon uh, leader. Yeah, four carbon leader. Yeah, four carbon. Yeah. yeah. Look, caught big fish in that too, though. But that, uh, I know. That eight pound okay. cast and. And that, that leader. I don't know. Look at Dylan. Dylan caught that massive drum on that setup. I caught that big jack. Um, I mean, we, we hooked all kind of other fish. I mean, caught a big old flounder that won me that tournament in 93. Yeah. 
I don't even know where that trophy is anymore. <laughs> it's the biggest trophy I got. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, um, so what would you look for in the summertime <laughs> if you was out there fishing? We're going to do a Louisiana section with him, and then we'll do a Florida session with me. So what are you looking for? Looking yeah. for the birds. Looking for the birds. Birds diving. Summertime birds, huh? Yeah. And not the food birds. And the shrimp's popping. Yeah, the shrimp's popping. Yeah. The shrimp will be popping and the birds will be waiting for them. Yeah. Were well, y'all running DOAs back then or y'all just running any kind of plastics or uh, anything else? No. Just uh, probably a, a double rigger if we're going to fish in a... And they, uh, a school of fish like that. Yeah. And so you get two at a yeah. time. Yeah. Kind of like how we did what Christmas Eve morning. How was that? Well, what, yeah, Christmas Eve morning we limited out in what thirty minutes, fifty of them, yeah. two at a time, freaking just swinging them in a the boat. Yeah. yeah. Me and Mister Pat was catching fish one time off by uh, the uh, I think it was from the Miller Village, and uh, we was catching two at a time. Me and Mister Pat and Scott. Scott was about. Maybe nine, something like that, ten years old. Is that he the time the, time. Uh, chain, the, the board came around and hit him in the head? No. Uh, and he uh, he was be on the floor there catching the, the fish as we were throwing them in the boat and just putting them in the ice chest. And he had a hard time keeping up with us because we were catching them that fast. Two at a time. Yeah. Yeah, so. We, so, sat, we came out uh, there before they even put a limit. On redfish, and we're talking about a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, we would sit on the on the fan tail of the boat. We were standing up there. One, two, three of us. One would catch a fish. He'd get down and put it in the ice chest. The other one would rotate around. And just feel like that. Just keep on rotating around. Catch a fish. Step down. Catch a fish. Step down. Then now we hit the, the big old 165 quart ice chest, and that's full of fish. Hmm. Reds, and I was saying you could keep the reds. That big, you know, we was keeping little reds too. Yeah, those are probably the better tasting ones anyway. Well, that was the time that when there was, there was no size one of them. Yeah. Well, because Scott got you hooked on fishing later on, big time. Who, me? Yeah. I fished everywhere I went. But, uh, no, we're, we're now we go, so he said, you know, follow the birds, you just don't want to follow the full birds. You know, you're going to use a double rigger, y'all day in Louisiana. Well, you gonna look? let me tell you how you tell what's the, the, the fools and uh, the good birds. The good birds will be so far up above, maybe about three or four foot well, over the water and picking up the shrimp. Where you catch these oh, you fools, these lion yeah. birds, they're way oh, up in the bought. air and they're diving in the water. You can see them just diving, diving, diving. A lot of times you see those birds, they're diving on a little fish down, but the nervous the shrimp is where the, the speckle trout will be. Right. And they, and they were chasing the shrimp underneath, and the shrimp would come to the top of the water, and the, and the, the seagulls would catch the shrimp. Right. So you want them hovering. Right. You want them hovering close right. to the water, not and, diving in the water. Or you could maybe just pass and see a, a big group of seagulls just sitting on the water. Right. And they, they, they may have been on the strike and before that, and then uh, they, they'll come back up. Hmm. Yeah, that's a. I always, always look for those that oil slick. You know. Yeah. Usually, whenever you find them, they start knocking that oil into the into the water from the bodies. Yeah, I don't fish fish oyster reefs. Yeah. Try to find the, the drop off on the reef. And most of the times on these different reefs, you know, we fished them so many times that we knew where the drop offs were. You know. Right. There was nothing new to us. See, Baba. We would fish them. But I, every spot we'd fish, I. I can remember where I caught a fish and how I caught it and everything. I'm the same way. I can can remember and uh, I go back to the same pattern and everything. Catch another one right there. Yeah. Another one, another one. Yeah. It wasn't for us enough. I went one time, we went fish soccerly, white perch, all right? And the limit in Louisiana was 50 at the time. Still 50. Yeah, well, still 50, but. You could catch them at that time. Yeah, I know. You can catch them now. You just catch 50 then. So we, uh, we went out and we caught 50 of them. Mr. Pat caught 50 and I caught 50. We had 100 soccer all right, which is a white perch, what we call them. Yeah, I know. And uh, we came back and I said, let's go. So we took off and then 
in order to get back home, we had to pass through this lake, Lake uh, Salvador. And we stopped in Lake Salvador, and we caught a uh, lemon on speckled uh, And then we also went along the bank and caught a lemon on redfish. And I was back home at 2 o'clock that afternoon. There you that, go. That was the best fish I've ever made in my whole life, fishing trip. I see yeah, you come back, catch the lemon, come home, unload, and turn around. <laughs> no, I used to see, I used back. I know, I used to see him come home with all those frogs and stuff, and then I'd go out there and get like five frogs. I'm like, what's the dang deal? But, you know, it just, it's just not like it used to be. Over time, it seems like it's, there's plenty of reasons why it ain't good, but I, I feel like the decline of at least the west side fishery in Louisiana was over at fished. the Katrina. I think it was at the Katrina. I don't think it's overfished. I just think it's that you, you don't have the, uh, the land to support all the stuff like you used to have. You didn't have that nursery where everybody, you know, these fish could hide. Now it's all open water, so where are they going to hide, you know? They still go to the same places, but you just might not, they might, uh, you might have less fish to get to adulthood, basically. But as far as, like, oh, Florida goes and stuff, you're going to want to be around the inlets. If you're getting around Texas, Louisiana, all the inlets, uh, go Grand Isle, the beach fishing is what's going to be hot right now. It, all that in the outer islands. Same thing over here in Florida, around the passes, um, you know, uh, Alabama, the passes have been good. Right in the surf, somewhere over there. I need to make my way over there and go try to catch me a big, big one. You take, uh, right now, this time, the crabs are moving into Grand Isle. Yeah. Going in at the, at the later age, you know. Yeah. So now, it's so if you want to go crabbing, you go right this time yeah. of year. So, there you go. Uh, old Papa said... You want to catch crabs right now? They're going into Grand Isle. This is the time of year that you want to go get them. Obviously, you can't keep the ones with the orange underneath the belly. Those are called pom poms, or that's what the Cajuns call it. Yeah, they'll give you a big fine if you keep them. Yeah, and uh, you don't want to keep them anyway. You want to be able to keep the. Uh, you want that's to the put them crabs. back. Yeah, you want to put them back for the future crabs <laughs> and make sure we don't. Uh, they don't have any closures like they did a couple years ago. They closed it for a little while. Yeah, yeah. because the crabs are scarce. Yeah. And but I mean, they, scarce. I mean, maybe I don't know. I mean, last time I was in Louisiana, I caught what four dozen right there off of the feet. In the feet right there by the, uh, yeah. not the handicap wolf, uh, by Rosestone. I caught like four dozen of them right there. Right there off that dock. That was for Rod the Bull last year. Yeah, but you, that was, that's mostly gumbo crabs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not big eater crabs, but, I mean, in Grand Isle, you're going to get the big eaters. You know, so, at least the big females <laughs> with all the carrots on the inside, so. And then, uh, fishing out there with a corky. Uh, I, I caught some nice fish on a DS, uh, on a, Downside Lures 5-inch burner shed last year or two years ago. I, I don't get to go down there as much as I used to because I live in Florida. So, But, uh, yeah, I hope y'all like this little uh, talk about, you know, this is kind of why I ain't putting a video out this week. I just kind of been hanging out with the, I just been hanging out with the family. And uh, I ain't really felt like going fishing. I just kind of felt like hanging around the house. So I'll get back after it sometime this weekend, and uh, I'll check y'all on the next one. Y'all say bye. 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 Okay.